So today we'll start the chapter number three, and in this chapter we will talk about agriculture and the environment. So when we're talking about the agriculture, so it means that you are cultivating the crops and you are planting the things, and where you are planting in the soil. So what is the soil? Soil is the top layer of the earth surface. You might call it dirt. Sometimes maybe you say it's a dirt. In other words. So, because it is just like a sand, or it is just like some kind of, if it is a rain, it's become mud, something like that. The soil, it is a fundamental to growth of a plant. So, whenever you have a, want to grow any plant, so you need a soil. Right now, they are using different uh, type of the experiments in which they are growing the plants in the water even. So, but still that they are not getting everything there. They're not getting 100% nutrient from that. They have to use artificial, you can say fertilizers a lot in that process. But the main, you can say fundamental is the uh, growth of the plant is the soil. Now we'll talk about the composition of the soil. If you talk about the composition of a soil, so the soil is a mixture of organic matter in which you have minerals, you have gases like nitrogen, you have liquids, it can be water and other organisms that together support the life. So you will find in the soil all these things. For example, when we talk about the mineral particles, what are, what are the mineral particles? Combination of the rock fragments and other inorganic, sub, inorganic substances. So for example, sand, silt and clay, all these they are found in the soil. So these are the mineral part. So when we, because here we mentioned that there are minerals in the soil. So what are the mineral particles there? It can be sand, it can be silt, it can be clay. So these are all the types of minerals. So here they have given the example also. Now organic content. So what are the organic content there? So mixture of living things, plants, animals, and microorganisms, and the dead plants remain. So all they are containing, all they're called organic things. But the living plants, animals, microorganisms, and their dead remains when they die. So they buried in the soil also. So all this is made what organic content. So this is the organic content which is found in the soil. After that air, and we said how the air means gases, we said that in the soil you have the gases, and where the gas you'll find, you can see here. These are the soil particles. This is the water part inside it, and here you have air-filled pores. Pores means small holes in which you have the air inside it. So air enters the soil by diffusion, and from outside it goes inside the soil. So this is known as diffusion. So here, first we discussed that in the soil, which things are present, we said the minerals are present. And what are the example we said, say, we said, say, this is the clay, we said, this is the silt, we discussed, then we said that organic matter is present in the soil. And what is we discussed about organic matter, we said that the living plants, then you have microorganisms, then you have the dead plants and this one, the animals and their remain, all they make the organic matter. And then we have gases and gases in the air. So air is inside the pores of the soil. So this is the explanation of composition of the soil. Now the water. If you talk about the water, water is also there inside the soil. So here you will find the water, for example, here we said that these are the water part, we can see here. And here from water is going up to the plants and it's going to the roots and then going to other parts. So it means water is also present there. And water, where water enters in the soil when there is a precipitation or the soil is irrigated. From where the water comes in the soil when there is a rain, or their kind of a snow, or when you water, when you do the irrigations, then water comes down into the soil. So this is the another part of the soil that is liquid and mean the water. 
Now, if you see the proportion of uh, components of a typical cultivated soil, the cultivated soil means the soil in which you are growing the plants and the crops. So, if you see the composition, what is that? 25% of that soil is consist of the air. 45% of that soil is consist of the minerals. I will discuss about the clay and other silt. And 25 is a water part there. Okay, the 5% you have organic matter. And in the organic matter, you have 10% organisms, 10% the roots, and 80% is humus. 80% of this 5% humus. And we talk about humus, humus, not that you are eating here. Humus is a type of the soil. What is a humus? Humus is a dark organic material that forms in the soil when plant and dead uh, and plants and animals matter decays. So when you have a soil, for example, you have a normal soil. This is your normal soil. Got it? When any plant or any animal, they died. And after that, the bacteria start the decay process. Bacteria start the decay process. And then they mix in the soil. When they mix in the soil, that black or the dark color organic soil is known as humus. Now, proportion of the soil components depends on what? Now, this is another, it doesn't mean that always you will find 25% of water, 25% of air, and 45% as we discussed that we have minerals. It doesn't mean that always this percentage remains same. No, it also depends on the top, the top of the, you can say type of the soil. And there are different types of the soil and they have all these things, but in a different proportion. The percentage will be different. We have, have some here, for example, sandy soil. If you talk about the sandy soil, sandy soil is light, warm, dry, and tends to be acidic and low in nutrients. Sandy soils are often known as light soil due to their high proportion of sand and little clay. So here you will find more sand and little clay, so they are less in nutrients. Got it? So this is the, you can go to the detail, but in the exam, if even you know the type and it's only the main composition, that will be okay. Clay soil. What is a clay soil? Clay soil is a heavy so, uh, soil type that benefits from high nutrients. Clay soil remains wet and cold in winter and dry out in summer. These, uh, so, these soils are made of 20% of clay. And because of the space found between the clay particles, the clay solid hold a high amount of water. So here you'll find how high amount of water. So that they said that they will always find, you will find them wet in the winter and dry in the summer. So this is the another type of the soil that is the clay soil. Then you have the silt soil. Silt soil means the uh, silt soil is a light and moisture. Okay, retentive soil type with a high fertility rating. So here is also fertile, mean all the nutrients are high. But what is the difference here? As the silt soil uh, compromise, compromise, okay, compromise of medium size particle and they were well drained and hold moisture well. So in this type of the soil also keep the water inside them. and all if you would touch it, you'll find it's like a wet. It had a moisture inside. Got it? So this is another type of the soil. After that, you have the peat soil. What is the peat soil? Peat soil is a high in organic matter and retains a large amount of moisture. So here you have organic matter a lot. Organic matter, we discussed that the plants, the dead animals, microorganisms, and living things. So they are mean. If they are more in the quantity, so that type is known as peat soil. This type of a soil is very rarely found in a garden and often imported into a garden to provide an optimum soil base for planting. So normally you will not find them in the garden, but the people prepare it 
gardener they mix the things they buried it for a some time and then they prepare and then they sell it and if you want to make a garden so you need this type of a soil in the beginning because the soil there maybe it's not fertile so you will use that one so that's known as peat soil after that the chalk soil chalk soil mean chalk soil can be either light or heavy but always high highly alkane highly alkane means they are basic due to calcium carbonate line within structure so the, as these soils are alkaline they will not support the growth of the uh, ericaceous plants that required acidic soil to grow so this is the type of the plants which need the acidic soil to grow so here they are saying they want to say this type of a soil has a limitation that any plant which need a acidic soil they they cannot grow here because this chalk soil is basic in nature or alkaline in nature after that you have the loam soil loam soil mean that the loam soil is a mixture of sand silt and clay they that are combined to avoid the negative effect of each type so in the loam soil they are mixed together these soils are fertile easy to work with and provide good drainage depending on their predominant composition they can be either sandy or clay loam so here you first of all the, if the question comes the what is the loam soils you can say it is a mixture the soil which has a mixture of sand silt and clay okay and they are mixed together and when they are mixed together why they are getting mixed together because they want to minimize the effect of each one if the soil become all sandy then there is a problem if the soil is all silty it's a problem if all clay there a problem so they mix them together so they make a clay which will not affect but that will be fertile okay way it has been managed the local climatic condition the size of the mineral particles so here they are saying that whenever you talk about the soil which type of the soil will be in such area so it depends on three things number one way it has been managed how you are managing your soil okay you are taking care properly you are adding the fertilizer or you are adding the Uh, river water in the river water already have the soil inside mean the sand inside so after the local climate conditions and uh, the naturally the climate they have the different type of the soil for example if you talk about the saudi arabia there the soil is uh, like a sandy soil and you sometimes you'll find the min lot of minerals mean the stone are there in your country in sudan in pakistan in other countries you'll find a different type of the soil according to the climate after that the size of the mineral particles the third thing on which you can decide the which type of the soil it can be it's the size of the mineral if the mineral particles large in the size then it is a different type of the soil and if they are small in size they are different so these are all the type which we have studied you should know their names and just like basic the type for example loam soil it means sand silt and clay like this no need for more details after that where do the soil composition come from now they are saying that when you are talking about the soil composition from where it comes the minerals particles now first the mineral particles okay which occupy the largest volume within the soil found from the weathering and erosion they are saying we discussed that the in the soil you will find minerals and these minerals from where they come they come from weathering and erosion you remember weathering we said that when a stone or a rock it break down into small pieces due to the weather conditions due to the heat all this so it is known as weathering and those small particles when they move from one place to another that's known as erosion so they are saying that minerals in the soil they comes due to weathering and erosion weathering is what is a weathering weathering is a process by in way by the rocks are broken down into smaller pieces and what is the erosion 
movement of these particles from one place to another if they can move with the help of air they can move with the help of water so this is known as erosion so here you can see the first diagram this one the weathering causes the rock breakdown so break down the pieces erosion and the transport the sediments they moving from due to water or air they are coming down so this is how the different part of the soil comes from after the weathering of a rock can take place in number of forms so weathering also have different form number one physical weathering what is the physical weathering is caused by frost frost mean the very cold weather where the snow heat due to heat water and ice or the wind any type of weathering the breakdown of the big rock into small pieces if it is happening due to the frost mean cold weather due to hot weather due to water due to snow or ice or due to wind so if the weathering is happening due to these things so that type of weathering is known as physical weathering you can see here this diagram shows the physical weathering you can see it is breaking down here you can see these are breaking down first they break down into large pieces and from large breaking down into small pieces this is the physical weathering after that chemical weathering what is the chemical weathering it is caused by carbon dioxide in the air combined with the water to weak acid the acid rain the carbonic when the acid rain happens and those areas so they will go inside they fall on the rocks and they break them down so you can find this type of shape the small holes you can find you can hear these holes these are all due to weathering so this type of weathering in which the acidic rain is involved that is known as chemical weathering you can see here send the diagram you can see but it doesn't happen in one month two month one year two year it take many years to happen like this so that is chemical weathering now the type of chemical weathering so one type we said that the reaction with water okay reaction with acid and reaction with oxygen reaction with organisms so the chemical weathering happens due to these thing maybe water will the so the water will make a reaction with the so uh, the rock or the oxygen mean air it is make a reaction with the rock or the acid like acidic rain make a reaction or the organism they are inside the so this rock they are doing this one so these are the types of chemical weathering biological weathering what is a biological weathering it is caused by the process such as growth of a plant's roots into the cracks movement of animals across the rock and organism in the soil can produce carbon dioxide which combine with the water and form carbonic acid so here it happened due to the plants or small animals so if they will do something and due to that the rock will break down into small pieces so that is known as biological weathering you can see here there is a small organism here in this hole and another diagram you can see here you maybe you found this type of organism in the rock and they are making small holes and after some time you will see that rock the rock start to break down from here so this is also biological weathering okay now you have the soil particles can be classified into three groups according to their size see here the particle type the sand now what is the particle size here from 2 mm to 0.02 mm and what will be the structure the gritty structure and what is the characteristic of that type of the soil which have the sand and the size is like this what is that the large pore size drains well water can go inside well contains large air spaces 
if you have a silt in the soil and the soil what can be the size of the silt it can be from 0.02 to 0.002 mm silky or soapy if you see the structure it like a silky very slippery or soapy less friction than the sand particles are slippery if you have a clay it will be less than 0.02 mm 0.002 mm sticky when wet and particle held together tightly poor air spaces or drainage forms a hard mass when dry so these are the different type of the particles and their sizes and how they look like and if the soil has this one so what will the type the behavior of the characteristics of the soil now soil for plant growth the most plants require a combination of the factor that grow successfully number 1 what the soil should have the availability of the important nutrient to support the plant of the growth for example there should be potassium for example you have nitrogen you have potassium you have phosphorus they should have so the soil that is good for the plant it should have the nutrients that encourage encourage, encourage to hold the roots securely the plant the soil should be so uh, strong that it can hold the plant strongly otherwise the plant cannot grow well it can supply the water that oxygen around the roots to enable the root cell to respire so there should be the oxygen inside or air should be there so that type if any soil has these four properties so that uh, soil is known as successful uh, soil for the growth of the plant now you have npk as we discussed that n mean nitrogen phosphorus and potassium plants require the supply of nitrogen phosphorus and potassium and a range of other elements or uh, to construct the proteins and carry out the life process for example you say the nitrogen in which form the nitrogen is present there in the form of nitrate phosphorus is found in the form of phosphate ion and potassium in the pos- the potassium ion so you will find these so they are really important three you can say elements which are really important for the better growth of the growth of the plants after that you have the organic content organic content as we discussed that that living uh, the plants then the dead plants microorganism many different decomposer that produce humus rich nutrients are involved so what are the organic uh, you can say uh, things which are involved in the making the humus are breaking down the earthworms they are breaking down the vegetation you have fungi or sometimes you say fungi both are okay british and american feed directly on dead matter bacteria work on organic matter to convert this one so these are the organic content producers so these are one two three they are breaking down the different type of the minerals or different type of the food or the living things and they are creating a humus humus mean the soil with rich with the nutrients after that you have high level of organic matter have the following positive effects if you have high organic materials inside a uh, soil so what are the positive effect of that high percentage increase the water holding capacity if there is a more organic matter in the soil so it can hold more water that type of the soil can hold more water like a sponge that means less irrigation is required it means in that soil you no need to plant again and again means you not give the water again and again so if less water is also okay for them because already soil can hold the water so you can see here so this is they're saying increase in organic matter can result up to for example if you 
one percent, let's say you have in the soil twenty percent organic matter you have. Now, if you want to make from twenty to twenty one, it means how much you increase? Only one percent you increase. That one percent when increase how much? Twenty thousand gallons of available soils per acre in one acre. That is the area. That much of the water can it be saved if you increase the one percent of organic matter in the soil. Increase the air space in the soil. If the air space will be more, so you can see here. This is more air space here, and here you have less air space. You can see here, both. So it also increases the air space in the soil, and it is really good for the growth of the plant. What is the third positive factor? Increase number of decomposers, tunnels, and burrows in the soil. So here also, if you have More organic material in the soil, it will increase the decomposers. Like we said, the fungi, bacteria, okay, and earthworm. So it will be more. The pH of the soil now. The pH of the soil, you know, pH is a scale which decide the between the acid and base. So if the pH, the soil also have a pH. So if you want a better growth of a plants in the soil, the pH should be. Seven or neutral, but due to different factors, sometimes the pH will be disturbed. So here we see that the pH of the soil depends on what. That depends on the type of the parent rock and the pH of the water flows into the area. The pH of the soil depends on the which type of the rock particle present in the soil and from where the water comes. Affects the uptake of the nutrient by the plant. How much the uh, plants are taking nutrients from the soil affects the availability of the nutrients. If the pH is high or low, it will affect the availability of the nutrients. Farmers can try changing the pH of the soil. If it's become acidic, they use the alkaline like limestone, and they're making it basic. The farmer can. Change this one in chemistry. You have a topic also, acidic soil. Now here the uh, signs of the mineral nutrient deficiency in the plants. If you will find some, uh, you can say signs in the plants, it means that it has a deficiency of this particular nutrient. For example, if there is a deficiency of nitrogen in the plant, the slow growth, yellowing leaves, the oldest. First, and this become old really quickly. If the phosphorus is less, leaves dull with blue green color, leaves falls early. If potassium is less in the soil, the poor quality of the fruit and seed leaves the brown edges. If the sulfur is less, yellowing the leaf. Okay, youngest first. Okay. Then you have calcium. Yes. If there is increasing or decreasing, uh, the, the uh, deficiency. The deficiency. See here. Symptoms of deficiency. If there are less. Okay. okay. Now, if you have calcium, the death of the plant tissues, poor fruit storage. If the deficiency of magnesium, yellow, uh, yellowing of leaves between the leaf veins, early leaf fall. If the deficiency of iron, yellowing of leaves between the veins, youngest leaves first. It youngest leaves mean means these signs will be appear in young leaves first. Copper. The dark green leaves become twisted and withered. Means they will just like uh, if you will take a tissue in your hand and you just press it, just like compressed like this. Zinc leaves show poor development. 
grow only to very small size boron leaves misshapen and malformed hard areas in fruits and their storage organ so these are the signs if the soil has deficiency of all these after that there's a the comparison between the sandy soil versus clay soil sand soil large air space poor air space drains well poor drainage poor retention of the humus reta retains the humus easier to cultivate hard to cultivate so this is like comparison between to some time it comes compare both of them after that you have the agriculture agriculture what is the agriculture agriculture means you are cultivating the plants trees fruits all this one so that's known as the agriculture so the where the definition agriculture is defined as cultivation of animals plants and fungi for food and other products used to sustain human life so anything we are doing for human life to getting food cultivating plants and animals all these they are known comes in the umbrella of agriculture now it depends on agriculture which type of agriculture and how much agriculture a country has it depends on the following factor number one the climate of the country or the that place or that area the culture of that area climate means if there is a hot weather like in saudi arabia so you can grow the crops well only those crops which can sustain which can bear the harsh weather like you have the dates okay like tamar you have this one and the culture which type of the agriculture they have so then for example in some countries they like uh, the rice much they eat rice too much so they will grow the rice crops more than the other one some countries they need bread more than rice so they will need more wheat so like this the technology which type of technology they have it depends on that economics of the country if the country has resources it has the money to spend on agriculture so then they have the agriculture there now we we'll talk about the type of the agriculture if we talk about the type of agriculture so you can divide the agriculture into two main types Num number uh, one arable agriculture arable agriculture mean that arable farming involves growing crops such as which one wheat and barley rather than the keeping animals are growing fruits and vegetable so the type of the farming in which you are growing the crops which crops mainly wheat barley oil seed peas beans sugar beets and potatoes so whenever ever you are doing these type of the crops in the some area so that ag agriculture is known as arable agriculture this is the type of the agriculture you can see here all these are arable agriculture after then we have pastoral agriculture pastoral agriculture means when you anim, uh, aim to producing livestock livestock mean animals rather than growing crops the like farming the people making the livestock farm they are for making for dairy products raising the beef cattle for the meat the sheep for the wool when you are doing the animals you are doing the livestock mean the animals you are growing the animals only that is known as pastoral agriculture so this is the second type now third type is a mixture of both mixed agriculture in which you the farming is doing both they are growing the the crops and also in a small area they are doing the animals raising the animals so mostly the countries like asia like in, in, in the in continent asia you have the like pakistan india malaysia indonesia even your sudan afghanistan south africa china and you they doing this one because a farmer can fulfill the need both needs the 
crops wise like wheat rice and all these and also the dairy products the culti other example the cultivation of the crop alongside the rearing of animals for the meat and egg or milk defined as mixed farming so these are also for poultry mean for the meat sheep or cattle like this so this is first one you have arable arable means only the crops other one pastoral means only animals here mix mean both together after that you have subsistence agriculture what is subsistence agriculture the subsistence agriculture across when farmers grow the food crops to meet the needs of themselves and their families they are doing only for themselves they are not doing for selling maybe small amount left then they can sell it but their main purpose is to feed themselves the commercial means their main purpose they will grow the crops and they will sell them commercial agriculture is a cropping method in which crops are raised and livestock are raised in order to sell products the crops and animals they are raised to sell them and to get the money this is the main difference subsistence for themselves maybe the small amount they can sell very small but commercial they are main purpose to sell them and get the money so this is the main difference between subsistence and commercial agriculture now we will make the comparison between the agriculture types like subsistence and commercial so here we said that as we discussed before so in subsistence cultivation of the food to meet the needs of the farmers and their families but here cultivation of the food uh, with the main aim of selling them for cash surplus is bartered for the other goods or cash bartered is a system before the money the people are exchanging the things for example one farmer is growing the wheat and other is growing rice so they exchange themselves without giving the money that's known was barter system so sometimes the farmer they exchange the, like this or sometimes they send sell it so, uh, some food may be used by the farmer by themselves example wheat and rice example tea coffee that uh, coca sugar cane cotton all this one so this is the main difference between them okay now if you make the difference between arable and pastoral here simply production of the plants for consumption by humans production of the animals or animal related products example rice wheat maize okay soybean here you have the grass grains to feed milk and you have milk wool and eggs mixed in which you have both arable and pastoral after that you have extensive production what is extensive production it occurs when there is a small amount of production from a large area of a land for example you have a big land but from that land maybe you are getting let's say one uh, 10 thousand kg of rice okay but that area is really big you are getting on so that's known as extensive production intensive production occur when the large amount of uh, produce from small for example you have a small area like this from that maybe you are getting 20000 so that is the different type of the because it is why these terms are used in some countries they don't have much technology they have a very large areas they don't have a good seed they don't have a good irrigation system so they are getting very small amount of the crop from a large area so that type of agriculture or production is known as extensive but in very rich countries developed countries from a small area due to technology good seeds good condition they are getting more production more you can say uh, yield so that's known as intensive production this is the main difference between them increasing the agricultural yield how you can increase the agricultural yield mean how you can get more crops for example 
how you can get more uh, rice more wheat from a field how you can do so they're saying that first of all why it is happening why the agriculture products are demanding so there are different factors number one the demand of a food keep on increasing as the global population is increasing this is one of the as there is a pressure on the food production in the number of ways including okay number of ways number one how what are the ways you can increase number one an increasing world population needs more resources due to that climate changing affecting the ability of the fertile land sometime due to flood due to weather conditions maybe the it is disturbed increase the in the standard of living the people they are need more variety of the food if you go even to the market you can find maybe 10 different type of mangoes maybe more than 10 the grapes different types the citrus food different types why it's happening because people's life standards is increasing I mean they are becoming high so they need also need more food increasing settlement size reducing the ability to farm land what is happening the agriculture land now people are making the homes there the new cities are built so by this way there will be less land for farming so it is also reduce the food production larger population impacting on the ability of the water for irrigation so when you are doing the farming you need water also but if the population increase they need more water so maybe there is less water is there for agriculture techniques for improving the crop yield so how you can improve the crop yield there are yield mean the production quantity there are some successful technique that help the farmer to meet the need of for increased food production to feed growing population so they are different so the farmer they are using that different technique number one crop rotation crop rotation mean that not always you will for example you will cultivate the rice and after that you will do the wheat only to no you have to rotate you have to different other type maybe you can do the sugar cane or you can do the beans maybe you can do the potatoes like this different type of the crops will be keep in rotation okay so that's known as crop rotation the principle of growing different type of the plants in different plots each year related group of the plants are grown together during a season then they start the next season move different the plots of the land like this you are doing this one that's known as a crop rotation continuing growing the same plants in the same place causes if you will not do the crop rotation you will continue the same the plots in the same area what will happen a build up the disease in the soil that can affect the plant and increase in the pests that attack the plants a uh, depletion in the soil nutrients the soil nutrients will be become less that can be a reason okay now uh, a large plot of land usually divide into four smaller areas you can divide into small, each contain the particular type of the plant for example you have legumes legumes mean this family of the which like a seed okay like the legume family consist of the plant that produce a pod with the seeds inside the term legume is used to describe the seed of these plants common edible legumes includes lentils peas chickpeas beans soy soy beans and peanuts they are legume so they are saying that you should cultivate the legumes there why because they are fixing the nitrogen okay they are fixing nitrogen bacteria there like these these are all legumes you have 
leafy crops vegetable that are required for their leaves required for example what is a leafy crop the leafy vegetables are highly uh, variable groups of the crops plants that broadly can be different for example what are they you have spinach turnip parsley and lettuce so all these are more there you can these down here green leaves so you can also grow them there root crops have a deep roots these are you can do this one also then other method is fallow what is a fallow fallow the land is ploughed and left barren you will leave it without any cultivation any farming and leave it empty for some time maybe four months three months so in the meantime the nutrients will be fixed inside means due to different reason the new the nutrients will come to the ratio where after some time you can grow the plant so that is also a method here advantages of crop rotation disease in the soil affecting the plants are left behind pest needs to find a new site for their population is reduced the soil in the new plot is likely to have essential nutrients crops ready to harvest at different times less potential waste less labor and machine needed so you have advantages and disadvantages of the crops here we talking about advantages here they have given for example what is the crop one year rotation the types of crop number for example you are taking what maize mustard rice and wheat this is in one year you have to for example now let's say first 3 months from january to march you will do maize then april to june you will do mustard then july to september you will do rice then you have october to december you will do wheat and you will do one year like this and again when the january march comes then again you will do the maize here so this is one year rotation it means one crop will come after one year again other you have two years rotation you can see here three years rotation like this so it depends okay it's not always it depends on the type of the soil the agri the, the area like this fertilizers what are the fertilizers fertilizers contain minerals such as nitrogen potassium and phosphorus add the nutrient available in the soil sometime you don't have that much you can say organic material inside so you will use that one number one organic soil the for example advantage disadvantage of different type of the soil organic soil if you have organic fertilizer what are the advantages uses natural sorry uh, natural resources supplies organic matter what are disadvantages unpleasant to handle because it is made by waste of animals it's very difficult very smelly hard to transport even you if you want to move from one place to another it's really difficult variable composition you cannot say that the nitrogen this person no it can be vary in organic meet a particular need for example you have nitrogen fertilizer potassium fertilizer can to need you can use them easier to store they are in the bags you can store them disadvantages cost of manufacture they are very costly and also transportation cost you need to pay quick acting okay deficiency problems are dealt with swiftly if you have a quick acting so you can quickly do this one but easily leach out if the rain comes and this comes easily they will go out slow acting now they are talking about this one actually they are 
this is a type for example organic is slow acting in organic quick acting okay so if you are using organic it is slow acting no need to reapply it will remain for a long time little immediate impact it will show the effect but after a long time if you have inorganic quick acting deficiency problem dealt very quickly but if there is a heavy rain it can go without uh, with the rain so maybe you have to use again that one so these are advantage and disadvantage of that one after that irrigation so irrigation means supplying water to the crops why irrigation is important because water uh, is very important for the living things especially for the human and plant large percentage of the plant is made of of water essential for cell activity used in photosynthesis a lot of you can say importance of the irrigation so here the process of supplying water can be divided into three types uh, three stages not type stages number 1 the storage of water first of all you should have a water then how the transportation of the required how you will bring the water to the crop application how you will make apply them okay there are different common method which are used they have some advantages and some disadvantages number one method is known as overhead sprinkles like you in arabic maybe you'll say like a uh, rashash something like that it is like this you can see here the water is come with the form of sprinkles from up on the falling down here it has advantages and disadvantages easy to set up can cover large area no need to attach pipes to each plant disadvantage large droplets may be cap the soil capping soil means the soil become hard the soil droplet may be blown by the wind water land on the leaves maybe will not go down up to the ground like this advantage disadvantages you can see here this is also a type after that clay pot irrigation clay pot irrigation system in which what they will do they will take a clay and they will clay pot and they will bury in the ground like this and around that you will grow the plants advantage is simple technology easy to check the amount of water you can remove the cover and check how much water high efficiency water is not wasted only suitable for permanent plants large labor cost yes you need a large labor to make it how it works like this whatever the soil need water because it is porous water can go back uh, go out of this and they go out slowly slowly and like this you can save 70% of water but is not can be for more, more area for a small area then you have trickle drip system in trickle drip system you have like this one the pipes and and each uh, plant you will make a small hole like this okay advantage is water placed directly to the base of the plant automated and controlled by computer water is used very efficiently yes uh, expensive to install the compliance to uh, maintain the grid can be blocked the tubes if the there is a uh, you can say uh, dirt or sand or soil can this one inflexible cannot moved easily once you install it you cannot move it from one place to another so this is working like this so this is if you see it good goes like this is the animation picture also here it work like this and if you want to make a system it goes like this here you have a well from here the water come to this one then the sand filter then from here the pipes will come so this is the trickle drip system so let irrigation mostly done in our countries they just take the water from the river or they just allow it to go in the field like this not it it go like this so this is the advantages inexpensive nothing to do can cover large area quickly lot of water is wasted and damage the soil structure to control the competing organisms how you can control the weeds 
weeds are the plant that is growing in in appropriate place they need to be controlled because they compete with the crops for light water so it means that these are the plants which you don't need they comes like this with the other crops so if you will not remove them they will take the nutrients of the other plants so reduce the quality of the seed or the grain or the grain crops might be poisonous make cultivation difficult can block the drainage system can be source of the pests and diseases can look untidy impact on tourism areas so they are saying that they should be removed that one okay then these uh, chemical uh, control of the weed how you can control them so they are different method weed killing chemicals are known as herbicides these the weeds they can be killed by herbicide what are the advantages of herbicide easier to manage alternatives many be less effective cheaper result are more predictable less labor needed effect is more rapid so these are chemical you are using this one alternative if you don't want to use this one how you can remove the weeds now they are using the weed you can see here this is all weeds this is all weeds these are your main crops these are the main crops so if you don't have this one so you are using the labors to remove and clear this area or other method weed barriers so you can make the plastic sheets like this then weed will be down they will not come only your plants are outside so they cannot get and finally they will die down like this also plastic barriers or sometime with the flame before the plants they will grow they will clear the weeds by burning them or by like this also burning here or controlling the pesticide and diseases now pests before we talk about uh, weeds now we talk about the pests mean that insects how you can control them the chemical which are used to kill the animals they attack the crops plant that's known as pesticides the chemical which is used to kill them they known as pesticides so how you are using them you can see they are spraying them these are different type of the pesticides here also this is for insects if there are insects you are is also you are using at your home to kill the fly the mosquitoes okay it's also there the crop disease is caused by fungi bacteria or virus that's known as pathogen see here this is a, from here you can see this is due to fungi so for that you have the chemicals they are known as fungicides they are they if you use them they can kill the fungi alternative to insecticides biological control now there are also natural enemies of the insects the natural enemies is known as biological control agents so they eat them the predators okay pathogens all these one they are you can see here they eat the insects which are disturbing your crops this one you can see advantage and disadvantage no chemical residue are left when you are doing bi biological the no impact of the sprays like this you can just compare them they are really easy okay mechanization if you want to grow more field in your more crops you can do more mechanize mean use of machinery if you will bring more machinery you can do the work in less time and you can increase the production of your crops like this you can see here modern machines are used selective breeding you you will select the breed or the seeds in such a way that they have more production because now scientists after the lot of research and experiments they have created the different type of the seeds they will give you more crops for example the first generation second generation you can see they are giving more fruits here Gen yeah, you have the GMO, genetically modified organic 
mechanisms. So it means that they are doing some, uh, you can say, changes in the DNA of other organisms and they are mixing them and they are doing this one. Advantages, they are good. Disease or resistance, nutrition, uh, the nutrition value may be increased, lot of things, but they also have disadvantages. They also on human health, they have disadvantages. Products are not natural because they are not natural. You disturb their natural structure. So this is a type of increase the yield, but still that is uh, not good. Controlling the cropping the environment. If you are giving a good environment, you are giving the good, for example, the for animals. I'm talking about animals. If you are doing, you are giving the shelter like this, so you can good get good uh, product from them. If you will cover your, uh, you can say, uh, fields by the this one trees, so they will stop the wind and other things. So then your crops will be safe and they will grow well. This is another method. They, they are known as wind breaks. After that, the greenhouse also used for that. What are the growth factors in the greenhouse? You can control light, humidity, day length and water. You can control them and you can change them by some different uh, machines. So that is how the greenhouse works. The greenhouse effect, you know that the green, what is the greenhouse effect? That due to different gases, the earth have a layer of greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and other gases. They allow the infrared rays to get in, but they don't allow to go out to the space. So due to that, the temperature of the earth is increasing, so that causing the global warming. This effect is known as greenhouse effect. When the sun rays can come, but maximum will not go back, stopped by the gases. So that's known as greenhouse effect. You can see here, in greenhouse effect, they have the temperature controls. So whatever the temperature you want to keep in this greenhouse, so you can keep it. If the temperature increase more, so you can open the windows or you can switch on the ACs. So you can control them like this. After that, you have the hydrophonics, as we did talk about when, when they are growing the plants in the water, like this. This is also a technique. You can see here, it's all in water. In water, they are adding the nutrients and all these things you can see here. It has advantage, disadvantage, no need for soil, can be used anywhere. But here, it's expensive to build like this. So you, there are some advantages and some disadvantages you can see this one. After that, you have impact of agriculture on people environment. Yes, you have a lot of agriculture over size of herbicides. If you are using in agriculture, you are using herbicides and insecticides, they are chemicals. So they can damage the natural environment, the spray, they can go to the water, the water can damage their the fertilizers overuse. It can also disturb the pH of the soil, the plants become the toxic, a lot of things happen. The solution that uh, you should limit the fertilizers only when you need it urgently or no other, you can say alternative, then use it. Misuse of irrigation, when you, you do misuse of irrigation, it damage the soil structure, death of the plants, loss of nutrients, all this one. So you can see here different type, soil erosion, salination. This is the when the salt come on the soil. Here you can say the salination. Overproduction and the waste, waste from overproduction, the unsold, one minute only. Okay. So here you have overproduction and the waste means the waste from overproduction. For example, sometime you have the crops, you grow the crop, you get the crop, but you didn't sold, you did not sell it, you, uh, you didn't use it, so it is a waste. Waste of storage spaces, okay? So overproduction, there should be no overproduction. Whatever you need, only produce that one. The waste of transportation, also if you have 
the cell the crops then lot of time the waste is there during the long distance waste of quality products so all these overproduction and waste the how it can waste then you have extraction of minerals iron content then the farmer use the soil over the over again again no rest to the soil and the all the nutrients they are used up they become less so what is the solution crop rotation mixed cropping leaving the land follow cash crops replacing the food crops now the more the farmers they are want to uh, plant the crops only which give them more money they don't care that this is uh, good or not I mean for example the more people need the wheat to eat the for bread and for other things but maybe he will make one bag of wheat he will sell 1000 real but if he will uh, grow the apple the one bag maybe he will sell the 5000 now people don't need the apple more than the wheat so here lot of things are happening mechanization the more advanced technology coming in the agriculture so they are working very quickly less labor is required machines increase that uh, production all these things so that's also mechanization soil erosion what is soil erosion as we said that soil is moved from one place to another due to the different reasons one is over cultivation you were getting crops more and more and due to that what the impacts can be there are number of the horizontal layers of the soil the top soil is most fertile if there is soil erosion you will lose the top soil and you cannot grow the plant well after that causes of soil erosion removal of natural vegetation if you remove the plantation so it will start the soil erosion so plants are very important to stop the soil erosion over cultivation also the risk of the soil erosion so you should not that do the over cultivation after the over grazing the and don't leave the animals in the field and let them grow because if they will eat all the grass and vegetation then there will be more chances for the soil erosion wind erosion so if there is a way more wind in that area so it will take the top layer of the soil so that is known as also erosion the water erosion if due to the flood the water coming from one area so it can erode the top soil of some area or heavy rainfall it can also do the soil erosion you can see here what is happening the soil erosion you can see here also soil compaction reduce infiltration when the soil becomes so hard you can see here soil becomes so hard that time water cannot go down so when the water will come it will not go down it will remove the top layer so that is due to why because the soil become hard it also can the soil erosion then you have the gully erosion mean that the erosion stream contain the volume of water erodes local here you have the the streams okay here near the stream the or near the river you will find the soil is going inside the river that is also the soil erosion impacts of soil erosion top soil is removed organism leaving the top soil they lost their habitat silting up the soil you can see the silt up mean the more salt comes up there silt silt deposit can form form lagoons what is a lagoon 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 is a shallow body of water separated from a large body of the narrow land form you can see here like this it can also soil erosion can happen like this so aquatic and buried under the silty water the organism they can buried under the silt that if the, there is a soil erosion it can cause desertification fertile land convert into desert you can see here like this managing the soil erosion how you can manage the soil erosion that's a different type of agriculture structures are there one is terracing terracing means make the field like this so the water cannot flow directly like this no the water will come like this 
by this way they will stop the water erosion reduce the water erosion you can see here this is another type counter ploughing means don't plough the in like this not all the land like some area here like this some area like this some area like this some area like this like this is known as counter ploughing so it will also stop here you can see it will also stop the soil erosion bond means you will put the like uh, these type of the wall of the mud or the sand in the side it also stop them the soil erosion wind breaks like this as we discuss if you have a wind breaks around your fields so the, they will stop the wind and that also stop the soil erosion maintaining the crop cover what is maintaining the crop cover so the harvest of low residue low crop such as corn silage or soya beans you will crop them and after that usually soil surface fill and left them like this you remove the fruit from them and leave them like this so after some time these crops they will mix with the soil and then they will become more you can say organic and soil erosion will be less no dig method means instead of digging the soil okay just put the soil on other the soil layer and then grow the plant like this this is another addition of organic matter to improve the soil structure yes if you add the organic material to the soil you can reduce the soil structure also it can improve the nutrients and it can also hold the more water reduce the soil erosion like this you can say multi layer approach of cropping like this one here you can see here they are crop here they can a crop like this here they can a crop so this is a multi layer it's also good for the more field uh, more food and the soil erosion sustainable agriculture means it mean that you will do agriculture in such a way you meet the population needs making the efficient use of resources don't waste resources because your future generation they also use the same resources so that's known as sustainable organic fertilizers they are slow acting but they are good and they are also made by the organic material improve improve the soil structure manage grazing so the if you don't leave the animals for grazing like such a way you can do some areas fix for the animals and that one crop rotation again the things coming how you can improve the what uh, the soil uh, agriculture in your production so this is for today